Welcome to another episode of Games Go Online, where we provide industry professionals to kind of walk us through a technical breakdown of a personal project and kind of have a casual chat as if we're in a cafe and just talking shit. Uh, so please welcome our special guest, a familiar face if you are coming from Game Dev Unchained, Igor Puskar. Did I say it better this time? Uh, Puskaric. But Puskaric. yeah, it's, it's awkward in English. Even for me, it's awkward in English. You have to twist the tongue in a way and do it. Right. So for it's like Puskaric, days, almost. I'll get it right one of these days, I promise. Um, people who are, uh, didn't hear from you from our uh, podcast, we had an awesome episode on Game Dev Unchained. And uh, anybody that is watching, uh, I encourage you guys to go over there and uh, take a listen. But uh, if you don't mind, Igor, can you kind of briefly go over your resume, kind of give a, a chance for the uh, viewers out there of uh, who you are? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Igor Pushkaric, and I've been doing freelance uh, for about nine years now. Uh, what I do is uh, artistic outsourcing for entertainment industry, mainly games. So basically, I'm a generalist, which means I do a lot, I wear a lot of hats, modeling, concepting, uh, basic rigging, animation, uh, everything in between depends depends on the project. Uh, and I'll be doing a lot of stuff in quite diverse fashion. Uh, that's about like the main points. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us again. Uh, uh, so, thank you for uh, inviting me again. <laughs> of course, man. I had such a great chat with you last time. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, we were briefly talking about before. We don't have to retread old steps. So anybody who are interested in, in your backstory and your history, go go listen to the latest episode. Yeah. Um, and uh, Igor, you're, of course, from Eastern Europe and Croatia uh, yeah. and have to be self-taught and have produced many, many great work. And uh, I guess this hour, do you mind kind of talking about what you're going to show us? And uh, I think I have your screen as well. And whenever you're ready to uh, pull uh, yeah. it up, we can switch to that. Well, uh, I prepared some stuff that I can show. It's about the game that's going to come out uh, if, if you feel like it would be interesting. Of Basically, course. I... I, I completely disregarded my personal work over the last year and a half, sort of. So this was my personal work in a way, although it's for the thanks of the Galaxy game that's going to come out. Uh, maybe I should p play a trailer first for kind of grabbing the context about what's what's going on. Definitely. Uh, let's go ahead and All play right. the trailer. But uh, in the recording of this, I'll make sure to play like a high res trailer to give it justice. But let's go ahead and play it through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'll see where it's going to show. Because I have two, sc I, uh, have two screens, so I only label one, uh, mm -hmm. the lower one. No do you see it? Yes, I do see it. So I'm going to switch over All to right. that screen. Uh, give me one right. second to. So uh, it's a vertical because it's on for mobile machines. Right. All right, starting. It's thirty seconds long, short and sweet. No worries. <laughs> so for the live viewers out there, uh, <laughs> we'll play this in high res <coughs> glory very soon. This is pretty cool, man. So is this uh, for the uh, iPad or uh, PC? Uh, for uh, I I iOS and Androids. Okay. Yeah, that was a short short gameplay uh, gameplay trailer. That's for the initial phase, while we are collecting uh, signups for early access, mm -hmm. which will lead uh, soon to beta and pre-alpha and soft launch. Right. And this game has been in development for how long? Well, for about, I started with them, with Space Jar about uh, starting to 2018. And it's, they were planning it before and building the infrastructure before. But uh, I'm in, in the team from, from beginning uh, 2018 till now. And we'll stay. So it's three people with occasional help from the side all this time. Mm -hmm. uh, me being the 
almost all only artists. I mean, only basically only artists with some help occasionally on the side. Uh, it it was really really it was the most diverse project I've ever been involved in, ever. Um, so what what aspect of it would you feel? most interesting which one because i did mostly all aspects well go for and it man like kind of, any... and it's kind of wide <laughs> <laughs> take us on your journey right so you're traditionally an artist and i know you're like um always wearing multiple hats so if you don't mind yeah. kind of going through some of the tanks and ships that you you help design yeah. and input uh we can take a yeah, look at that probably, on the screen mm -hmm. probably be the best uh, well, basically, I will I will show the, the most kind of flagshipy tank that we have, and this was designed. This one. Do you see it? Yes. So I'm going to switch to your screen. Bam. All right. So this is we call it bubble gun. The original design is made by Humber Shabell. The, artist who was a concept artist in the fifth element movie oh, nice. uh, he did uh, all the base uh, designs for the tanks and a great portion of the building it has directed like the general visual feel of the game initially mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, i took it from there and we kind of uh, the whole team collaborated as we were developing the textures and animations and kind of a system to make it uh, dynamic in terms of coloring color masks and how, how all this will behave how it will look inside the game because um, uh, it has to look good in game you know? mm -hmm. so everything we build is built for that uh, perspective what, what is this uh, uh is this blender what uh, is this is marmoset set marble set marble set tool bag it's great for uh and game dev artsy presentation yeah. things it also shows pbr maps uh, very easily right sorry i'm uh, like far away from my screen right now like we just uh -huh. had like uh, okay. a lighting artist was showing us blender and the ui looked very similar it's like oh my god another blender guy um, uh, no no <laughs> i'm not a blender guy but i am curious and i am following uh, what's gonna happen yeah their development still, right? still not yeah it's huge but uh it's i don't like weird. it <laughs> you don't like it? Yeah, it's good. No, it's actually, changing really, the industry, you dislike man. it. Yeah. I know, uh, I know. And it will become standard. Yeah. I'm sure of it. Uh, but just not yet. It just right. keeps throwing bridges in front of me whenever I want to do something. There's always some yep. extra it's button. And I just, yep. it makes me nuts. But I, ex I expect, I expect it's not going to be always. And 2.8 is hugely better than 2.7, like mm -hmm. light years. Yeah. So this is a perfect um, time for me to start <laughs> asking for, um, to build something like this from start to finish. What is your preferred software and methodology and thinking yeah. behind for, it? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I basically create a pipeline for each project and for each model. It all depends on what you need. If this was a, a, like a bio, biological concept, I would go with ZBrush first. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I did all in 3D Max because Max is um, like a multidisciplinary uh, package where I can enter animation, rigging, and modeling all at once and then have to leave it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I use Photoshop. Uh, uh, people ask me why I don't, I don't use like uh, Substance Painter. Mm -hmm. Thing is, Painter is great, but only if you have to just paint. Meaning, uh, Photoshop gives me much more um, testing ability than than the Substance. Mm -hmm. it, it's v far more like versatile. Mm -hmm. um, when you need to test stuff, create new patterns, twist images, like all these things you cannot do in substance. Yes. So that's why I use Photoshop. Also for advanced stuff like normal maps and all that, I just derived that from a diffuse prepared layered stuff. Yes. I completely agree with you there. Like um I was a big fan of um uh of Quixel's Endu. I don't know if you use that program. Oh I love it. Yeah, yeah, right? I use Endu a lot. Yeah, yeah so there's 
it's still that aspect within a substance painter that's that still hasn't covered that right i tried doing norm mouse with substance yeah. painter where i apply it's like oh man it just feels counterintuitive i just want to create a pattern turn that into norm map and apply it on there and it's just yeah like you said photoshop has the history to kind of support that type of mindset um even though exactly. they're all owned yeah, by you can also now. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, like, I can block out stuff in Photoshop, and I can just uh, change it on the layer as I go, which substance doesn't allow, like opacity. Uh, I can drive other masks based on these masks. It just substance is like a very crude tool, and it it's great when you get a finished concept. You just have to paint it. But right. In, in my case, I, I don't work like I just I concept all the way till the end. And this is a level of experimentation, which substance still doesn't have for me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't use it. But uh, substance designer on the other hand, is something I want to get into because it's really powerful. It is really powerful. Uh, yeah. This is where I'm a bit late for now. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I recognize the, the huge potential that it holds. Yeah. Designer definitely still has, in my opinion, like a great place for stylized um, textures. Well, like just tileable textures, right? Yeah. But like with yeah, mega yeah. scans coming out with photogrammetry being things, like why do I want to make grass uh, from scratch? <laughs> you know, there's that weird like, yeah, yeah I'm at, because I, I, I took the time when the design, substance designer became something very popular where I was like, oh, I got to learn this. And I learned it. And then, like a few months later, Mega yeah. Scans came out, and I was like, "Well, I don't need to learn how, how to make that anymore." Yeah, but me like, too. I learned it for. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "I can I learned just download it." For the it. Content. Yeah, that looks there exactly content, what I want to yeah. make. Yeah, it's like I don't need to yeah, make yeah. grass. <laughs> they need to get their ass yeah, sort of like that. Yeah, I also like to create my own PBR because they allow mm. mistakes to make it, make it original. Yeah, like I don't care if something is original metal. I don't want to be original metal. I want it to look fun. Um, and this is what uh, Photoshop again gives me. I can separate the map and sub map as I wish. It also allows for like per map manipulation, which is amazing. And it's quite hard to do the same thing in, uh, in substance. It just lacks the control and array. Otherwise yeah. it's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, for these, I used Photoshop and NDO, and I had to lift the neural maps. Also, another thing, why we didn't do, this was not done by a classic high to low poly burn, mm -hmm. because it's just faster like this. NDO gives you huge amounts of flexibility and testing. And this is not how it initially looked. Uh, this was iterated over a long period of time, and the whole team like had an input. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're still iterating. So uh, you guys mentioned before being a small team. Um, are you guys mostly remote or are you guys working alongside each other? Yeah, we're all, all remote. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. does the review process and feedback process work? Do you guys just throw in Slack channel or something and like look at it, tell me what you think? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, it's Skype, Discord, uh, mail. Mm -hmm. We're, well, we're very good in communication, which is the most important thing ever. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of things you kind of suppose that are hidden under one term, like retopology. You, know, mm -hmm. you don't have to explain what that is to everyone, because everyone knows this and all other stuff. It's about the, the lingo that carries itself, and we are all kind of acquainted. So, communications is uh, is uh, very direct and clear, which is awesome. And if it's not clear, then a good painter can do wonders. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned before 3D Max being your initial um, program that you kind of go and sometimes uh, ZBrush, depending yeah. if it's organic. Uh, have you experimented yeah. with? The, like the snazzy 3d programs out there like the silos and and moto and all these hard surfacing 3d applications i'm sure you're, you're Some, curious <laughs> yeah yeah kind of i kind of see i i, I had a fusion 360 right that one but too, it didn't, yeah. didn't fit it's awesome but it didn't fit um and i tried like inventor 
for physically based stuff. Right. Uh, and I did have like those little trips, but uh, I'm so busy most of the time that I mm -hmm. just it just it doesn't pay off. Mm -hmm. And it, you, it's quite different. Like, you know? Right. You, know. you have like this. Um, um, you found something that uh, professionally you're having a lot of fun. So that it kind of eats up yeah. into your personal project, uh, which, you know, rightly so. And um, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, your, your whole time is dedicated to creating art for for this project that you guys are about to uh, release. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's how like how? Complete. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. So is there some part of you is like, man, I would love to, um, because it's always great to experiment, right, on the side. Because when your yeah. head's down, it's more like I'm relying on things I know that works to get things done. But like yeah, all these new snazzy, yeah, yeah, and all these distractions happens. Like, oh, look it's like a new boolean tool that makes things easier exactly. like, let's take a look at that so how do you balance yeah, NDO, that NDO, NDO was a distraction actually which <laughs> yeah. paid off huge right. in a huge way yes that's so what exactly i'm saying yeah. mean yeah there are like workflows being developed all the time that would actually yeah. be better but uh like how do you balance that and um how do you think about maybe that's something i could work into my workflow and it's worth spending some time to 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 discover if it works or not well when you we have to be in in this world and uh, with a good networking you have friends who try to show you so you you give it a shot and see if it works for you basically that's the main main way of finding out I also do try stuff but um if it's like too complicated, then I, I don't go there because mm -hmm. I, I like have my own set of tools that that covers like huge majority of what I need. Mm -hmm. And then comes NDO that none of these have. It's just mandatory that I use it. I also use X normal still mm -hmm. when I have to burn. Oh, normal. And it, it, <laughs> it's beautiful. It works. Yeah, classic. It never failed me. I love it. Yeah. Just, have you tried the Marmoset baking working. tools? Because I know they have baking tools in there too. Uh, not yet. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Uh, well, I'm sure they're good. Mm -hmm. But Marmoset ain't broke, so I don't fix it. <laughs> right, 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 right. Although I would, of course, if it becomes broke, if I really see and notice uh, there are better things. Sure. But for example, in this project, I literally never used anything but max and mm -hmm. uh, photoshop i did once for some concepts but these were experimental like field trips still i love zbrush right a lot so that's one of the things being a 3d artist where you know with the z modeling tool and stuff like that it was tempting it was like oh i can i can model fully in zbrush <laughs> But then uh, I find it something. <laughs> yeah, almost it's fell into really that clean as hell. Yeah, it's just super clean. I can just stay here all the time. But then when I got into yeah. it, it's like, you know, I kind of want to go back to my or Max <laughs> to do some of this Oof, stuff. It, it, because it's, it was, it's, it's a different way of thinking. It's very crude. It's crude yeah. and heavy. It's not fluent. Like yeah. modeling in Max is really fluent. Mm -hmm. It's like playing a video game. Like one, two, three, Q, E, R, uh, R and the rest is like peripheral, but your right. hand doesn't fly all over the keyboard, mm -hmm. which is huge thing for speed. Mm -hmm. It's like those Japanese StarCraft players who just yeah. roll. And uh, for example, this is also why Blender doesn't sit with me. Mm -hmm. I have to constantly jump too far, too wide, too many buttons. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also I'm a very visual person. I don't remember his data as much as I remember location of buttons. Right, totally. and I only l learn shortcuts that I really, really always use. But um, anyway, I, I think everything will sit. I think, given enough time, we'll all just use one single perfect software <laughs> mm -hmm. because none of them are going back; they're just going to be getting better. So there has to be some point in time that everything's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. So de developing for the yeah. Android and iOS, you're definitely s dealing with constraints. Um, yeah, 
which is so the what, fun part. Right. It's uh, <laughs> being creative within a box, right? So can you kind of exactly, display yeah. some of that um, idea to developers out there, you know, you know, mm-hmm. how, how many tries this is and, you know, what, what are the uh, dangers of using Nora maps? Well, obviously you're using Nora map, but like what, what are the constraints yeah. that you are dealing with working on a smaller platform? Well, the thing is that like uh, today's mobile phone is, is as powerful as a 10 year old PC. Mm-hmm. So you can just put in 4K maps and let it flow. Mm-hmm. Um, and also you have to have LODs, of course. Mm-hmm. And the texture, design and texture must be like very carefully uh, fit so it looks like from this distance it must look pretty yeah as well as this distance Mm -hmm. so basically the way you block out stuff is uh, very directed based on how you're going to use the asset Mm -hmm. and and which version of it you can just uh like in pc have one and just have it flow Thing is, in our game, we don't have this view distance, and everything is like from the same same camera. We don't have to use many loads, this, because camera never goes like way off into the invisibility and down here. Mm. So this is a very good stuff for us. It also saved us some texture um, post processing stuff. Mm-hmm. Thing is, uh, on the majority of stuff, we we are more concerned about the overall size of the of the game for download mm-hmm. we, um, we didn't want it to get like overhauled so we were um, how do i say we're thinking of ways to get the most variety out of uh as smallest package as possible so there comes atlasing like and uh, mapping uh, so for example if when we want to have this blue version we don't have to have another whole texture that is blue so there we use masks like rgb channels that serve as generators which is also we also include the pbr however it's not going to look the same on low and high-end devices and this is where we need to be careful about how how we want to do it and where we want to place it Um, the point is from a design and artistic point that that, uh, uh, for example, take you just must look cute and good based based on its shape, form, and behavior. And the eye candy is left for the inner things because if the silhouette is good, then you're good. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, if silhouette is bad, gameplay is wrong, and everything sucks. Then no type of good advanced texture is not going to save it for sure. Mm-hmm. So there was a brief period where I was um, mostly developing and aiming my personal work towards like high end mm-hmm. devices, right? As I feel mm-hmm. people naturally do. Uh, and so yes. like there was a long time, I'm not a big mobile game player, right? But, uh, yeah, me neither. <laughs> and there was a brief time where I just ignored that space. And then when I came back, it's like, holy crap, we're talking about PBR on the phone now. And these graphics yeah, I was are like that, yeah, PS 3.5 <laughs> to four-ish quality. And I was like, it's, it makes sense because, you know, everyone's always basically buying a phone and technology is growing fast. And and yeah. what what were your like initial and impressions and, and like surprise about this, this market and developing games? Well, I was completely surprised. Uh, uh, I was mainly doing the PC thing also before so when i saw pbr running on a phone it was on a while <laughs> it unlocked uh, in my mind it unlocked uh, like a potential in my imagination where i can create further and how far can we go of course fast real fast you really hit the wall there because you mm-hmm. you can't just push pbr on everything mm-hmm. it, it, there is a cost also you need to think like holistically meaning the scene has a certain limit and mm-hmm. you have a budget per scene mm-hmm. so it kind of you have to have the more stuff at once in, mo- in your mind you have the better because there's a 
sort of multi-budgeting stuff. For example, we cannot make a tank that's like 40,000 uh, polys and have a building that, that's also 40,000 polys. Mm -hmm. For example, we rather aim for the scene to have same poly count. And then you plan how much you can distribute to this or that, uh, what has priority, what doesn't. And whichever thing does not have a priority, it also has to be decent because if it's too low, then it's going to pop out in a very bad way. So it's a, it's a constant balance between art, design, gameplay, programming, coding. And we all have to communicate because if I make something that just fits me, it's not going to really work necessarily. But so I have to know what's possible so that I know what to design and in what way. Uh, this came in really vital in terms of uh, animated parts, which will also, which were also maybe cut somewhere. So do you want to see animation for this one? <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. So, okay, plain. Oh. It'd be great too um, if you have like the the three the D model uh, in Max and like the texture file. It'd be great to kind of see uh, certain stages of this. But did you so you you handle pretty much all the three D art, the rigging and animation? Yeah, I also, I also did animation. It's the, also the rig is thing. <laughs> yeah, the, there is no actual rig here. Jesus, it's is that just transforming, a... dude? No, uh, just show that, uh, the <laughs> that we found fun. Uh, I can't start next because my license is uh, oh, expired. Yeah. We're going oh, yeah, to yeah, activate yeah. it after, hopefully, <laughs> the ending stuff. No. Uh, that's also why I love Blender a lot because this game I'm really scared it's free, of yeah. this with full right. And I think it's the end of greed, hopefully. Yeah, yeah hopefully. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, I'm going to have to use Blender. <laughs> Yeah, the depth's really fun to do. Yeah. Uh, what I like about it, I, ha I had full freedom to invent these animations, and I, I love it. Uh, basically, I have full freedom for everything, but then it comes down to does it fit or does it not fit, uh, so I take other ideas, and then... Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fun, iterative process. Yeah. For that, like, I had to learn... I had to learn a huge amount of new information during this project, because... Uh, is this your first time doing animation for at this level? No, no. Okay, okay. So but it's the first time I do for a project where I'm doing mostly everything else. Mm -hmm. I love animation in general. This is why I cannot specialize because I'd be pretty sad, like very right. fast. If I would just do animation with just texture, with just modeling, that would go nuts. Probably in months. Can you give so an I'm idea? for um, the amount of time spent in each stage to complete this whole thing uh, in terms of modeling, texturing, rigging, animation, and yeah. all that like, stuff. From start till end, it took about a week for one thing. What? R what roughly. Mean? For modeling? For everything. What? what? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Yeah. So you're talking about modeling, texturing, yeah. rigging, animation, yes. one week per yes. tank? Jeez. Yes, also UVs. Don't forget UVs. The hell. Oh <laughs> you work fast, dude. Are you serious? Yeah, we can work really fast. But that's because, I believe that's because we don't use the high poly mm. part. It can really be easier to. Also, there's no rigging. Rigging is also time taking if you really want to take it seriously. Right, right, right. So you're but yeah, tell me a day each discipline. It it took you sort of yes, okay. yes, sort of a day each. But you know, you have to think like constructively. All of these are basic primitives. Mm -hmm. So and then, as you look at it, you have to like feel what would be cool for animation here. Right. What's the awesomest part? Uh, and also, like, what's the most influential part? For example, it would not be very obvious if I animated the wheels. Mm -hmm. They would turn, but it's it's a great cost for something that's never visible. Right. So that's kind of also budgeting. Also, this could animate, which would be awesome if it was an FPS, 
like this, but it's not. It's like this tank, and in game it's like this. So mm -hmm. uh, we focused on the main points. Uh, maybe I can show you. Uh, oh yes, I'll, I'll show you the skin for this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what I designed. This is the skin for the same thing. Oh, nice. This is the mecha. So basically, we try to keep the same poly count for all of them, same ish, uh, and they have to keep keep within the basic silhouette so they are recognizable. But yeah, this also takes roughly a week uh, for the initial creation. It takes roughly a week. It depends very much on the tank. Some are simpler. So between, I would say, like minimum four days, uh, maximum like ten days. Mm -hmm. But then, then once you have them, then there's all this time when there's iteration. So you kind of go back sometimes. One time I used, I spent three or four days just to revamp the textures, for example. Mm -hmm. So it kind of piles up, up to ten days per tank, I'd say. So how many tanks oh, did you end time. up making? <laughs> well, eight tanks for now. <laughs> how many tanks? Eight tanks? Eight, yeah. Mm -hmm. With uh, a lot of skin variations? Uh, for now, we have just one made, but I also designed two more. I so, I can show you. so these are two more that I designed for him. Oh, nice. Like the blue one and this one. Um, these will be starting <laughs> i mean i will be starting making them soon so uh, yeah. so there's an initial design do you help with uh iterating on concept as well uh for some tanks yes i do mm -hmm. uh there was one thing that was awesome but it's um we we all aim, we aim for to have them in a bonding box that's like regular mainly but this one wasn't, so I, I redesigned it and uh, Humber helped confirming it so it fits. Like, yes, we all kind of do that. For, for example, if, if this canopy was like this tall, it would be a bit awkward. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep it within bounds. And then then I design it. Uh, as I, I do as much work as possible, solo, independent. Mm -hmm. To not bother other people, and only then after the, I've considered it finished, then I give it up and uh, then we go back and iterate. That's a good mindset. What's most? What's yeah? You know, it's it's efficient. It's a it's proven. Uh, what I like to do is invent animations based on fixed model. It's real fun for me. For example, uh, for example, this building. Mm -hmm. This is purely designed by Humber. So, like we were thinking, what would be awesome? As you play the game to give some life into that uh, terrain, so I made this. <laughs> <laughs> we will also have a little flame up here, mm -hmm. so it's gonna be a really, really interesting thing. I like how um, I like I just like the overall volume of your mesh. It just feels thick and and heavy. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a great design. Like it's a great design and it's perfect for the phone because people tend to forget how small the screens are and how every screen exactly, yeah. can disappear yeah, yeah. if you don't design it correctly. Yeah, so, so we kind of aim to animate the biggest parts. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it kind of, it's more charismatic, mm -hmm. I, I believe. And also the animations, like I, I intentionally did a different rhythm to each of them so it doesn't feel generic. Mm -hmm. And feels like it's actually doing something. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's the approach we took on everything. Uh, and this is Humbert's design. Mm -hmm. So this was the base for, nice. for what happened. Yeah. Um, basically, then what we needed was icons mm -hmm. and, and posters, and uh, maybe I show some icons. So you you design all a lot of oh, you just did you did everything, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything, <laughs> almost everything. I didn't do the skybox, 
-hmm. and some textures on the floor mm -hmm. and i didn't do uh, i didn't do rocks but i did edit rocks and i also did some edit basically if i didn't do it then i at least edited right. it whatever and i did this complete is where, ui yeah this is where i want to like point out how valuable indie developers are because they're so well versed with every yeah, discipline exactly. and it just creates more value as an artist it's like oh yeah. i've done ui before oh i've done it oh okay let's bring him on <laughs> i can help out here it kind of turns out like that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah also so it sounds quite weird when you say you did everything like mm -hmm. how are you lying <laughs> <laughs> i don't believe you, what do you mean? yeah yeah <laughs> But it's a, it's a, here's the thing that I run into with uh, artists. Um, you know, when I work on these big games, uh, what's funny is that they're so entrenched with making it the best art possible, but they're not very technical, right? And um, it's only recently where uh, studios see technical artists as being more valuable because it's like now you know how to make the game look good but also run well. But with indie developers, yeah. we're especially for like um, uh, mobile developers. Uh, I worked at a mobile studio at my last one. Mm -hmm. so everyone is very conscious of what they put in because everyone is responsible for making the game run. And so you can't go in yes. there and just throwing triangles and not exactly be. Uh, There's also like yeah, the, like that moment where you just make peace with the fact that you just cannot put everything yes. inside yeah it's like it's like killing your own baby <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but there is sort of, sort of a zen that you have to like take on well mm -hmm. maybe maybe next time <laughs> yeah yeah definitely because we all have grand visions right so mm -hmm. there's a great documentary regarding that it says it's called uh, finish not perfect mm -hmm. exactly so the important thing is to make it really beautiful but it, if it gets really tiring and too much back and forth then you just have to ditch it because mm -hmm. otherwise you're gonna you're gonna build it forever mm -hmm. and there's nothing there's it's not good to build a game forever so there is a point where you need to start releasing it yeah and it, I, I think it comes down to everything to art to programming design everything mm -hmm. it must be optimal and it will become perfect later <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm sure it I, totally I think that. I think I think also that even AAA uh, every game is like that. I don't think there is a perfect game mm -hmm. at all ever mm -hmm. <laughs> because you can always iterate mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the end, it's a product. We're doing entertainment, right? Yeah, Not saving the world. Yeah, <laughs> what is important that you provide. <laughs> Yeah, you need to just give a, a like a proof of concept, and uh, if the proof of concept works, then you're good. Why I speak in general, like for mm -hmm. all games, mm -hmm. basically we won't have sequels if the first one hasn't been proven, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And the the first one wasn't perfect, of course. Mm -hmm. Where, where do you see mobile development uh, heading towards now? You know that you've been spending a lot of time in on that side of the field. Like, how do you see? Do you ever? Well, I mean, it's hard to say that a phone will be as powerful as the PS Five, right? That's impossible. Just physically impossible. Yeah, for now, I think by that time we'll be just streaming kind of stuff. Uh, that would have to be it, yeah. And I would love to actually know your opinion on that. With this, all this like talk about people wanting being the game streaming for, of Netflix, right? Everyone's mm -hmm. kind of moving towards mm -hmm. that. Uh, I'm not buying into yeah. it yet. I, I <laughs> but Me like, neither. how do you feel? It's, yeah. uh, I think it's too early. Yeah. But uh, the idea is never going to die. I think mm -hmm. give it enough time and speeds will be sufficient for this and it's probably gonna come to to a point where everyone everyone have just some sort of a tablet mm -hmm. let's be this will be a common human right type thing mm -hmm. and you'll just stream everything over that stuff mm -hmm. like and maybe people will still have like hardcore powerful rigs 
but I believe that's going to be just for development purposes. Right. For now, I mean, depends on uh, what uh, what time we're talking about. Because give it enough time, and everything will happen, <laughs> yeah. for sure. But within our near future, I don't know about streaming. It will be something, but in my country, like there is no enough s- speed. I think mm-hmm. for now for, mm-hmm. to do it, I just don't have that kind of tech. Mm-hmm. Plus, kinda, uh, yeah, yeah, it kind of scares me in a way where. Um, I know how artists are, right? With developers, right? If you give them the key to the world, they'll they'll mm-hmm. do too much, right? And I feel like creativity, yeah. like you said before, yeah. needs limitations <laughs> for us to finish things. Uh, and exactly. so, like, if if the streaming thing happens where you're like, hey, you don't need a powerful rig, which also means that we don't have to go with any constraint. We just have like a suit computer on the other yeah. side of the company that runs the streaming software. Yeah. That means we can have like so much computing power and so many like GeForce Titans <laughs> duct tape together yeah. that anybody Crazy. can enjoy. It's, <laughs> I feel like it might be too much. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my god, great! Now, now we're never yeah, gonna ship. <laughs> we're never gonna ship. The producers are gonna always tell us to do more stuff. I don't know. I don't yeah, know how it works. So, but they're just an isolated team. Mm-hmm. For example, what if the the idea of universal basic income comes in mm-hmm. end, mm-hmm. comes into play? So that that then you'll have no incentive for survival at all. Mm-hmm. So basically, mm-hmm. then if someone's gonna build a game, it will exclusively be because they love it and not because yes. they have to survive. Mm-hmm. Then it either is gonna be built forever. Mm-hmm. Or it's gonna be built really slow, but it's gonna be perfect because mm-hmm. there are no deadlines. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm fantasizing now, but these ideas are appearing. So I'm sure it's gonna be some time for for that as well. I it's would actually real... like to comment on that. Like, Crazy. so universal yeah. basic income is kind of being thrown around in the United States right now. Yeah, yeah. I I flip flopped on it at first. I was thinking it's like, oh, people are lazy. People are gonna be lazier. And then successful people are going to be more successful. But then I was like, you know, it is fine <laughs> because in the end, everybody yeah. is going to be better. Um, is yeah, yeah. over there in Eastern Europe, like what, what kind of conversations are you guys having about it to kind of give some insight about? Absolutely non-existent. Okay. I don't think people, majority, majority of people even knows about the term. I see. I'm pretty sure. It's too advanced. Eastern Europe is not that advanced. We're like mm-hmm. 400 years behind Middle Europe. <laughs> mm-hmm. But oh, uh, when that stuff comes in, it's going to be adopted rapidly mm-hmm. by majority of the world, I'm sure, because it's just too huge to be denied. Right. Along with AI, along with... It's like, what is interesting for me is that it grows exponentially, not linearly. It's just gonna pop up one day, and there it is. Yeah, and I think we're gonna live to see it. Yeah, just it is exciting why. because I will say Very that people, yeah. people will definitely take more risk. Um, if I were for to, sure, yeah, keep it within the yeah. indie dev community. Uh, that like that's probably more money that their game usually generates a year, right? If it's like, yeah. people are like throwing a thousand dollar a month or something, right? It's like oh my gosh, like uh, <laughs> people are more going to be accepting to like i can maybe try this thing for a year and see how it yeah. goes i think it's yeah it's a huge really safety positive. net yeah really huge dude yeah people will be more willing to get married <laughs> to double it up oh <laughs> uh, for sure for sure and it's like oh we should <laughs> or... <laughs> get together <laughs> yeah, yeah mom, of course your mom can live with us yeah <laughs> oh man yeah, yeah, you, you can also cal- calculate the, the longevity pill yes. and, and stuff that's also kind of going live, mm-hmm. like the aging problem. It's also going to probably go away at one point. Mm-hmm. So it, it's going to change the world as, as we know it, for mm-hmm. sure, 100%. It's, and all these things are going to just cram up into one huge thing. It's not going to be just one of them. But they'll push each other, mm-hmm. one another. Like it's gonna be crazy. 
I think it's a step in the right direction. Like I've, um, uh, yeah, the, the more I learn about it, be, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah, to be more human and well, this slave made wage stuff is gonna completely go. So then people are gonna have a, an opportunity to be what they are, like fun, yeah. have fun, creative, imaginary, research. You will need to like spend and pay huge amounts of money to get education. It's gonna be like free. Probably, mm -hmm. I just don't know who's gonna pay for, like police, doctors, firefighters, all people who risk their lives, who, who have to really be difficult. That's that sort of stuff. If everything's free, who's gonna stop people from getting angry and kill each other? <laughs> right. There will be problems. But... Right, right, right. They're gonna <laughs> present new problems. But do you, are you saying like exactly. those people who risk their lives, they they wouldn't be. Um... Um, wanting to do this job if they're basic well I mean they're not doing it for the money at that point right yeah yeah it's very difficult to answer that mm -hmm. I don't know but that's gonna be a burning question mm -hmm. well basically we will have to prove that we can handle these types of problems so that we don't need higher institution to aid us right but that must come from people from mm -hmm. citizenship Mm -hmm. And we all have to kind of reach that mental level before that, mm -hmm. which is going to be very challenging, I believe. Mm -hmm. Because some people go crazy if they don't have stuff to do. Mm -hmm. So I, the creative people will going to benefit heavily. Uh, yeah. That's that I'm sure. Yeah. But I can't, I can't say for the entire world. I have no idea. Right. I feel like... Um... <laughs> There's enough motivated people that would make use of that benefit that it doesn't matter yeah. what the lazy people do. Who cares? <laughs> it's just like, who cares? Yeah, I don't it. care. I don't mind if everyone's lazy. Yeah. It really just doesn't. Give, just give me, me my money. Yeah. <laughs> I can do a lot with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> I'll handle it. <laughs> yeah, I'll handle it. Yeah. You can be lazy. Just don't bother me. It just don't bother me. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh we're we're about that hour igor so uh i want to thank all you all right yeah thank you for showing me well, that was I, i'm so yeah that's how fun works dude um yeah. so, <laughs> this is the the point of the podcast or the show where i actually uh again throw it back to you and you can huh? promote Shout out or give attention to anything that you want to talk about. You want to talk more about universal basic income? Go for it. But I'm sure you'll have uh, other fun things to talk about as well. Go for it, man. Well, mainly, I would like to promote the game we've been working on, Thanks to the Galaxy. Uh, so we're now com uh, uh, collecting people for internal testing. So please come and join us and have fun with us. Um, and that's about it. Hopefully, we're all just gonna have a one more huge blast <laughs> play. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me, of course. Of it was course, huge, man. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of fun with you on our podcast, and I'm gonna link that episode yeah, to this, <laughs> this awesome. one as well so that you guys can get a little more context on Igor's career and uh, how he came to be. Uh, thank you yeah. for everyone for tuning in and watching and for all the links and connections to the game that Igor is working on. Uh, just look below. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good one, man.